Josh Canfield competed on the 29th season of San Juan del Sur, where he finished in 11th place. A strong strategic player who looked likely to go deep, he was involved in a tense battle with rival player Jeremy for the middle part of the game and was ultimately blindsided just after the merge to become the first jury member. I spoke to Josh about why he never was able to trust Bao early on, singing around camp to keep Julie in the game, as well as just what it was like when Jeremy came back to Ponderosa and getting recognised on the street by a future cast member of the show. Josh, welcome to Survivor Oz. Uh, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Survivor Oz. A... Oh, when you said 11th place, that sounds horrible. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Can't you say, how about first first jury member? Yes. Sounds better. Yes. Let's start again. <laughs> the first jury member from... Uh... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I didn't For hear any of that. For some reason, that sounds better. It has number one in it. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Well, of course, this isn't your first time on our show. You uh, We had you on for an exit interview. And, of course, our Christmas episode right. last year as well. But... Um, a little, yes. bit, a little bit more in depth here, Josh. We're, we've got to grill you now. We've got to get all the dirt. Oh out of gosh! <laughs> oh, here we go. Some dirt. Yes. What we need, isn't it? <laughs> oh, of course. We always want the dirt because I guess really now it's uh, approaching a year since your season even was on TV. So it's kind of gone a, it is, quite quickly, hasn't it? It really has. It was interesting to see all the people getting back from uh, second chances because that was the same period of time when we were in. Uh, San Juan del Sur, and so it was like, oh my gosh, it's been a full year. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're gearing up this time a year ago when people, I guess, didn't even know who you were from a survivor perspective, of course. Yeah. Whereas, um, yeah. obviously, with other a- avenues, they know who you are. But, I mean, do, do you kind of look back at the journey now, uh, how quickly it's gone, and sometimes even think that you're considered a survivor player now as such a fan? I mean, it still must be weird sometimes. Yeah, it is. Every now and then, like, you kind of forget about it, and then someone, like, stops you on the street and is like, oh, my gosh, it's Josh, can I... And you're like, what? Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> right, right. It's like, it really, because you start going, especially in New York, because um, people don't really care as much about, like, any kind of, like, pseudo-celebrity or, you know, because, or, you know, Survivor people who've been on the show aren't, like, they aren't, like, full celebrities, but it's enough where people stop you on the street every now and then. Um, especially back in like your hometown or something like that, you get stopped all the time. But here in New York, it's easy to forget because you see like so many more interesting, famous people. <laughs> <laughs> I say that for myself. <laughs> that people just kind of go about their business. But um, every now and then, someone stops you, and you're like, "Oh right, I was on Survivor. <laughs> oh right, you know me." <laughs> Which, by the way, a funny little side note is a reason I were walking down the street yesterday. This girl jumps out of her cab. And run, um, she was in an Uber, and she jumped out with her entire family and comes running over to us and is like, oh, my gosh, Josh and Reed. She said, she starts it off going, like, I'm a huge fan of the show. I mean, I'm on season 32. Oh, uh, wow. And, and I was like, we were dying. It was hilarious. Of course, I'm not going to tell you who it was. No, but, no, um, of course not. It was... It, <laughs> It was uh, it was really funny because the first thing out of her mouth mouth was I'm a huge fan of the show and you guys and she was like I mean I'm on season thirty two <laughs> <laughs> like oh right and I'm also a part of the Survivor family now that's awesome so is she automatically then invited into the wine and cheese club <laughs> well I, I'm not going to go there yet because you know I, I don't want to I don't want to talk too much about uh, the new castaway <laughs> <laughs> well it's interesting with that because I know during um when your season was airing, we had, I think we had Eliza and it might have been Amy on together, I'm, I can't remember, but um, I, I know that basically during your season, you guys were pretty much invited into that club straight away, weren't you? Because they, they were huge fans. Eliza absolutely loved you and I think it was quite like, quick, hey, let's get Josh and Reed into our little club. Yeah, like as soon as it was announced like, and they found out that we were um, on the show and that we were living in New York, um, Eliza definitely reach out to us immediately, which was awesome because, you know, we've been fans of Eliza from watching the show. And so it was weird the first time because we're like, Eliza wants us to come over and hang out. Like, <laughs> what? What is going on? It's just so weird. And and now you just kind of get used to it. You don't even think because you're like, oh, right, we hang out with Eliza and we go out to dinner with Parvati and John and, like, um, hang out with Sophia. And it's just, it's just, that's just life now. Mm. And so you don't even think about it anymore. But I remember that first time a year ago 
when they were like, you've got to come over and hang out with the Wine and Cheese Club. And we were like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's so weird. And this time next year, the, the 32 contestants that you met, well, they're just going to be also part Absolutely. of... Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's hard to think that this time in a year now, if you look at it that way, we will have a winner from Season 32 and we'll be gearing up for Season yeah. 33. Jeez. <laughs> Which is... Uh, yeah, at this point, season 33 and 34 will have already been filmed, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. And we don't even know who's on season 32 yet. Well, exact, well, well, we kind of do, if you believe well, in leaks. Well, some of us, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, if you really look for it, you can find it. Yes, well, because the, the fascinating thing with that, of course, is that season 32 is what it will be known as, was, of course, filmed before what season 31 is. I know. Right. Isn't that so bizarre? I I feel actually really bad for that group of people because, I mean, they filmed back and they started in March. And and so by the time they even start airing, it's going to almost have been a full year since they did it. Where the people like us, we did, um, we were down in Nicaragua that, you know, in June, at end of May, June, July, and it aired in September. So, like, it, like, right off the bat, I can't imagine, like, waiting a year and, like, sitting on it and doing all this stuff, and no one else knows anything, and you mm -hmm. can't talk about it. Yeah, it would be torture. I think it was Karen Owen. Karen Owen, I'm pretty sure, had about a year's wait between when it was filmed, because that filmed back-to-back -back with Philippines. And oh, was it? Yeah. That was a year. Ooh. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it was around about that period. So, very interesting, and particularly considering that you've got as you said, somebody already coming out saying, I'm going to be on 32, and they're probably like, I, I can't tell you anything more than that. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly it. You're like, don't, don't spoil anything. You can, you're not allowed. We, we shouldn't know. Like, yes. Yes. Now, I'm fascinated. I, I know it's sort of been mentioned between you and Reed, um, the whole situation, how you guys got on the show with the applications and everything. Yeah. But um, yeah. take us through that again, Josh, because I'd like to hear the story, if there's more to this, about how you guys applied separately, yet you got on together. Is that how yeah. it worked? Yeah. So, okay. So, going back to the beginning, when um, Reed first, Reed was the original Survivor fan, he got me hooked once we started dating, and I was like, obsessed. And I started watching all the seasons. I was watching like seven seasons in like two weeks. It was like craziness. And um, anyway, I was so excited watching it. I was like, no, I want to do this. I don't want to just watch the show. I want to do this show. And so I told Reed, I was like, I'm making a video. And he's like, what? And I was like, I'm making a video. I want to go on the show. And he was like, well, you, you're just going to make one? I was like, no, you should too. And he goes, I'm scared because if I make one, I'm going to get on. <laughs> and I was like, exactly. And he goes, oh, I don't know. Like you just Anyway, so I made a video. And, of course, I, he couldn't be outdone by me, so he had to make a video, too. Um, we both made videos. We sent them in. Reed gets a call and um, from casting, and it's like, hey, we really like you, and blah, 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 blah. We want you to come out for callbacks. And they were like, we're interested in you for what's called Blood versus Water. And he's like, yeah, I know, from the previous season. He's like, they were like, do you have anyone, like a, a brother or a mom or um a dating partner, and he's like, actually, my boyfriend um, it would love to do it, and um, he's he starts telling him about me, and they go, wait, who's your boyfriend? And they're like, Josh, and he go, and they go, Canfield, <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, Josh Canfield, and she goes, this is crazy. He's next on my list to call, <laughs> like. And he was like, what? And she was like, I can't believe this. We found two guys who we both wanted, they wanted it called back, and they happened to be together. Um, so it was like, it was one of those things. We were like, oh, my gosh, this is so just like hand of God and fate. Like, this is it. This is supposed to happen. So we went out to callbacks together, kind of being like, they picked us both individually, and they want us for, you know, a couple season, how many couples do you think actually applied separately hmm. and wanted to do it separately and are getting on? So we were really excited and just kept that energy going through all the callbacks. So, yeah, we applied separately, and now the rest is history. So in terms of when you hear it's the blood versus water twist, is that something that you both liked, or would have you preferred perhaps to be on individually? That's a really good question. Um, I think in that moment, I would have, I liked that I got to do Blood versus Water because I wanted to be able to share that experience with Reed, but because of a life, like for future now, Reed and I have this amazing experience together that we can talk about whenever we want, and we both know exactly what the other person went through and understand everything, which 
a lot of people from Survivor don't have that. You know what I mean? Like, because that only certain people who've gone through it can under, really understand certain things. Anyway, um, but as far as gameplay and as far as, like, being a fan of what Survivor actually is, I would rather be by myself. And I think Reed would say the same thing because having someone else there with you, it, it changes the game uh, in a very big way because you have to be thinking about what they're saying and what they're doing and watching out for their well-being. And where when you're just playing on your own, you can focus on yourself. You can say whatever the hell you want to to different people and not have someone else be like, say something else, and you're supposed to be together. You know what I mean? Like, um, So I would... I would prefer to do it by myself, but I'm so grateful now for the experience that we had together because now it's just brought us closer. But as a Survivor fan, I, I think it's better to play by yourself. But as, as a fan, do you like the twist in general? Like, had you guys never played the show and you were just watching that for a second oh, time, do you like the twist? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, when uh, the first one came out, I really enjoyed the twist because, I mean, I, I liked watching some of the returners back and it was interesting to see their loved ones um, it's weird to think about our season because I was on it, like to think of maybe another season of Blood vs. Water with all movies. Um, it's okay. I don't think it's the best twist in the world, but I don't mind it. it I wouldn't put it in the top five best twists, but I, I don't mind it. It's, it's something interesting, and Survivors, I think the producers are really smart. I mean... It's been going for so long, over 15 years, and, like, they're keeping making it new. And I think that's good because it, it brings new people to the show. I think it keeps the old people. And I know some are purists and just want it to be exactly how it was. But the show has changed, and it's never going to be like it was the first four seasons. Like, because concepts have changed and people's strategy now, people know a lot more about how they can play the game. But I think doing twists like these actually does help Survivor move forward. Exactly. I agree with that. And uh, it's interesting kind of how it develops each year and there's always um, new things that certain fans like to complain about, but then a few years later, they're wishing for the way it was when they were complaining Absolutely. about it. <laughs> Absolutely. I, th I, th I think there's certain fans that just like to complain about seasons, yes. but we all love it anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. So going into the game, um, how do you guys sort of map out what you're going to do? Is there sort of that belief that you're not going to be on tribes together and then you'll come together at a certain right. point with a specific plan? Yeah, I mean, Reed and I talked about strategy before we went out there because we knew that we were both um, going to be probably a little imposing to people as to because we were both very athletic, um, strong men, and we're together. And we also have, we're also very personable with people. And so we knew that people were going to see us as threats immediately because we're strong, we're um, strong. We have athleticism, but we also know how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And so what we kind of decided before we were going in, we're like, we need to lay as low as possible. We need to try and play under the radar at first and not um, maybe let on that we know as much as we do. We're going on a blood versus water season. There might be some people who are not fans of this show. We need to maybe not let on that we're huge fans of the show as much because that could be a threat. So we literally talked about all the things that we could be considered a threat, and we were going to downplay all those. Um, but, of course, the problem always happens is you have a strategy, and then you get put with certain individuals on a team, and everything goes out the window, and you have to redo everything, right? So, like, on, on my tribe, there was no way for me to lay low. Like, it was from the get-go, people came to me, without me even doing anything, they were coming to me asking for advice and asking what to do and things. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? And there were so many people who never weren't fans of the show at all and didn't even know like when tribal council would be or when there would be a reward. And I was like, I, I know all this information. It's hard not to answer the questions when they're asked me. Hmm. So it was, it was difficult keeping the strategy, but um, that was what we tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you had that initial plan there, Josh, you know. That's, yeah, uh, <laughs> there, there, was a, there was a plan. <laughs> I don't think it went too well. Yeah, well, it's interesting with your season sort of in comparison to Worlds Apart because, um, it, yeah, it seemed like there was not a whole lot of fans of Survivor on your season, whereas Worlds Apart, I think we kind of had the opposite of that. We had 
maybe too many Absolutely. fans. But uh, I, I guess early on in those days when you're making those bonds with people, I mean, who are the ones that you're connecting with and who are the ones that were really coming to you saying, hey, what do I do? Where's tribal council? When are things like that? Yeah, I mean, well, that's kind of how um, I initially kind of got with Alec and Wes because they were the ones kind of coming to me with questions about what to do and when's, when is this and when is this. And I kind of took that as, you know what, these guys are already coming to me. They're going to look up to me. They're going to want to follow me. If I keep them in the loop and make them think that they are kind of answering their own questions and they're in charge this whole time, then I think we can keep like this trio going where we all feel like mutually on top when I'm actually in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of my, that was my idea with Wes and Alec. Um, and then, uh, yeah, those were the two main that were coming to ask me questions. Um, Baylor, very, I of course connected to really quickly and she was very much on board to just do whatever I said. <laughs> and then, it was the air, it was aired when Nadia obviously came and talked to me, um, and we all know what happened there. Um, but yeah, so literally, I'm trying to think. Everyone, I, Val never came and talked to me. Um, she never reached out to me, and I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think everyone else. I think that was the only one who didn't actually like reach out because, and I knew I went. This girl's smart. This girl knows what she's doing she might be a problem. She's going to be, I, I felt like I couldn't be an ally with her because I felt like she was going to be too strong and um, she would eventually turn against me. I just had uh, that feeling because I knew she was too smart. And so um, that's why Val and I, I think, never uh, really connected. Now Val and I are cool, though. Oh, that's good. Well, it's interesting, then, that that sort of happened at the beginning considering the, the rival we saw with you and Jeremy later on. So it was kind of like it was always meant to be then, Josh, that uh, you and it, the, the Collins was. would have a rivalry. <laughs> it was it was from the beginning it was going to be a rivalry. <laughs> yes. Now, you mentioned Nadia. Just quickly, we won't go over this too much, but, I mean, the whole one of the girls comment, I mean, was this a whole sure. bunch of editing or was this legitimately the case as to uh, her sort of having it so negative against you earlier? on um well what what didn't i didn't really turn against nadia because she said that like i understand where nadia was coming from it's not how i like i think it's a closed opinion of gay people to just group everyone together and be like oh they're just one of the girls and she was trying to, she was doing it endearingly because um her best friend is gay and loves to be called like a girl and loves to be called oh she like the girl pronouns so she's used to that and so coming across me i think she was just like oh i'm just going to treat him the same way but that's like me treating every straight person the same way like it doesn't make any sense everyone has different feelings and different you know what i mean so yeah. for her to think oh all gay people want to be treated like this was the mistake i wasn't upset i was just kind of like Ah, uh, that's not my thing. I don't want to be called a girl. And you immediately... And the thing was, it was more that she just assumed that I was just going to go with the girls. That was the issue. Not that she was, like, thinking of me as a girl. I don't care. You can think however you want. But to just be like, oh, no, you're definitely coming with us because it's all the girls together. It was like, no, I'm going to make my own way and I'm not going to just follow the, the girls' club and play into all these stereotypes... Um, I also knew I was representing um, a lot more than just myself on this show. So um, that, that was my initial. I was like, ooh, I don't think this is probably the best idea. And I had already had Wes and Alec, who I knew were going to um, follow me. And if I went with all the girls, they would have turned against me immediately. Hmm. And I was already on the bottom. I was already on the bottom of the girls' club. They were meeting on their own, and I was just an added person. So I would have been, you know, the number five in that alliance of five where I could have been basically at the top of the other alliance, which ended up coming, obviously, to bite me in the butt once the merge happened. But <laughs> still, <laughs> that was my idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fascinating, I guess, to be in that position straight away, particularly because it's a unique season in the fact that you obviously had uneven tribes because you had um, so and right, D pull right. out right at yeah. the beginning. So, Yeah, yeah that, that, and that would have changed the entire dynamic um, if there was another girl... Although I kind of feel even if there was another girl, I, I still feel like Baylor would have stayed with um, me 
Mm-hmm. And um, but then if you throw in like so, if so was on my team, I, I probably would have gone on really well with so, and maybe there would have been a different you know alliance. You throw one person different into a tribe, everything changes, and you guys all know that from all the seasons. I mean, it's everything changes. Any little tiny thing changes the dynamic. So it's kind of pointless to think about. I guess for me, like oh well, I wonder if that would have happened. I don't know. Yeah. Did you see much of so and do before the game before they were pulled out? Yeah, uh, but we weren't allowed to interact with them. Um, preseason stuff, you're not allowed to have any interaction. Like, I wasn't even allowed to have any interaction with Reed. Mm-hmm. So you are you were completely secluded and completely kept um, from speaking and interacting. But I saw them often, yes. We, I saw them every day. And uh, I guess when you see her then next season, I mean, were you surprised that she went out first boot? Did you think she had some potential? Um. Yeah, I was surprised that, that that she would be the first boot. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, she's a very capable young woman, and she was, uh, from what I could tell, um, and I, now I know her in a different way because I've actually, you know, spent time with her outside where she was in the city and stuff. So, like, um, you know, it, it, the first boot is is really difficult. I mean, look at Francesca. I'm friends with Francesca as well, and she, you know, she went out twice <laughs> first. That poor girl. And sometimes it's just the situation, and sometimes it is actually the actual person. But um, what an interesting Survivor season if it was all first booters. Yeah, it would be fascinating. It's kind <laughs> of like really you hear the word second chance. That legitimately is a second chance season. <laughs> that yeah, definitely. Like is that? I mean, I knew when I was going out there. I in my head, I was like, just don't get out first. Don't get out first. Don't be that person. I can't. I just can't be that person. So I was thrilled that Reed and I both were not those people. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes the first boots can be more memorable than like the second or third boots. So I guess. Oh, <laughs> oh, I think I think that's absolutely true. It's just the. Um, everything that comes with being the first boot, the yeah. reason why you're known yeah. is the problem. I think I might rather not be as well-known <laughs> and be like the third boot, you know what I mean, than be well-known for being the loser. Yes, that's a good point. Um, now, Koyopa obviously lost the first three challenges, um, and Val and, and Rocker went. The whole situation with Val and the second um, idol that she was trying to play, I mean, how, how quickly do you catch on to that um, you know, plan of hers that it might might not necessarily be true. Yeah, well, here's the thing. So the original, you know, at the beginning I where I said I thought that was really smart, those first um, couple of days I was like, yeah, I think she is really smart and she's strong. But then once she came back from um, exile, she started making up these, these idle things. And it was how she um, was saying things, how she was talking about her idol. It was... And for me, it was so easy to see through. I just, I didn't believe it for one second because I was like, here's a girl who's on the bottom. She knows she's on the bottom. She's out of the loop. This is an effort to make herself, you know, a little bit higher power in this tribe. And I was like, there's no way that that happened. I just, I don't believe it for a second. Um, so I, I personally, I, I, I think I saw right through it. You know, you're never 100% sure on Survivor because you know, people are lying all over the place, but I personally saw through it. I think most people did at, well, John Rocker obviously didn't. <laughs> um, but I just didn't believe it for a second. Yeah. Did, did, speaking of Rocker, did he discuss anything about his deal with Jeremy to keep Val safe at that point? No, no. The whole reason why I wanted John Rocker out, like I would have kept John Rocker much longer because he's such a huge target. And if you can get yourself behind that target, man, you can go a lot further because everyone's worrying about this guy and they wouldn't be worrying about me. Um, so I would have, I really wanted to keep him in much longer because I thought he was a great shield. The problem was he made that deal with Jeremy, didn't tell any of us until we got to um, that hero arena, and when Val had left, all of a sudden, out of the blue, he's like, I'm sorry, Jeremy, that Val's gone. You know, I told I told you I'd keep her safe and whatever, and every one of us on our tribe was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> You're, you, you said what? And Dennett had never talked to any of us about that. So all of us as a tribe were like, You're literally here 
having these strategic conversations with the other tribe and you didn't tell one person on your tribe, oh, no, sir, no, sir. Like, it was, it's so untrustworthy that I was like, I know he told me that he, he was the one, he told me that he had, that he had an muta idol. I think I, I might have been the only one he told. And I, I wanted to use that confidence, but then I was like, you made this other deal with Jeremy and he's not even on our team. And you didn't tell me like, I can't, I can't deal with this. What else are you talking to other people? And it came out once I saw the show that he was talking with Val and being like, I'm going to save you. I'm going to do all this. And I was like, Oh yeah, no, bye. Lucky, lucky. It's, it's always must be fascinating then to be, uh, watch all that play out because I guess you kind of, uh, as we all know, you don't get to see everything. And then when you get to see it on TV, yeah. you, you kind of open up all these, um, situations where you're like, hey, that makes a little bit more sense now. That happened. Oh, oh, absolutely. I was so excited to watch the show because I was like, I'm going to see all these things that were happening that I didn't really know were happening. Like, a lot of them you knew were happening, but you didn't know what was really being said and what you know, 100% was going on. So seeing those conversations between Val and John, I was just like, ah, yes, okay, this all makes sense. So I see, I thought what was happening, but it's so good to see it and know that you, your instincts were right. Mm. And I guess after that vote too, Dale obviously wasn't too happy. I mean, how much was the damage control with that? Because I guess as a fan, you would have assumed that a, a switch is coming quite soon at that point. Yeah, um, damage control was always the case with Dale. <laughs> <laughs> because Dale, I had multiple conversations with Dale where I was like, Dale, you need to settle down. You need to not be so abrasive to the rest of the tribe. You need to not yell at the younger people. I was like, because people do not like you because you were telling them what to do. You are constantly throwing at everyone's face that you're a super fan. Like, you cannot do this. We had those conversations, and he... He listened to me. He was like, I, I understand. It's just so hard because people are so stupid. And I'm like, yes, but you're being stupid if you do this as well. So, and he's like, right, 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 right. But he still kind of control himself. And so he never really endeared himself to anyone. But I was, I was always on damage control with him. And even after John went out, I was like, Dale, this had to happen because this is, a, you know, he's not trustworthy. He had an idol. Did he tell you he had an idol? No, he didn't tell you you had an idol. So you weren't really in an alliance with him. And, you know, I use things like that because I was like, he told me that he had an idol. But, you know, all those kind of things, you try to make them. And so I was trying to keep an ally in Dale because even with the tribe swap, I was hoping that he would end up making them merge. And honestly, if we would have lost one of those, once the, that tribe swap happened, Dale would have stayed in the game. Jeremy would have left because we would have voted out Jeremy from our side and I would have had one more ally and we would have had the numbers going into the game, the merge, but that didn't happen. No, so. it didn't. The what ifs there, Josh, you know, we're um, thinking of those and um, <laughs> completely different game then, completely different game. It's a completely, <laughs> diff it's a completely different game. Yes. Now, of course, Hanapu, um throw the next challenge. You get a bit of a break from Tribal Council. I mean, at this point, is uh, where's and Alex still sort of your, your closest allies? And where does someone like Jacqueline at this point sit in the game heading just before we get into the Switch? Sure. Um... I'm going to say Wes was my um, closest ally um, at this point. I think uh, besides Reed, I think Wes was always uh, my closest ally because it only Alec w was a close ally, but Alec was slightly um, spastic, and you never <laughs> knew exactly <laughs> you never knew exactly what he might do or say. Um, and so uh, he, there's like little trust there. Where at least with Wes, he was a little more calm and. Um, but really, really great in challenges. I, it wasn't shown enough. I, I really am sad about Wes's edit, actually, for our season, because Wes was a really cool guy and um, really good in challenges. Um, I would actually like to see Wes come back on the show. Um, personally, I would have rather Wes been on the show than Keith. I know why Keith went on the show. It makes sense, because he was comedy, and people love that. But mm -hmm. Wes, I think, was actually you know, a, a player that didn't get to use his full potential. So I hope he gets another chance at some point. But, yeah, so my closest ally was probably Wes. Let's see, Jacqueline. Um, at that point, I, I liked Jacqueline as a person, um, and we got on really well and we chatted, but we never t uh, chatted about strategy because where I was at with her at that point, um, she wasn't in our the alliance of Dale, Alec, Wes, uh, Baylor, and me. 
mm-hmm. and then she was literally the bottom at that point when after John Rocker went out. Everyone else wanted Dale to be on the bottom, but I was trying to keep that. Um, I was trying to keep Jacqueline on the bottom over Dale because I felt more that Dale um, had more uh, connection with me than Jacqueline. So that's why Jacqueline ended up on the bottom. It had nothing to do with her. I just didn't feel. I kind of felt I already had my my Baylor, and I didn't need a Baylor and a Jacqueline. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. Now Jacqueline's like my favorite person <laughs> outside <laughs> the game. Like Reed, Reed and I hang out with John and Jacqueline all the time. Besides Reed, Reed just pulled up and he was like, wait, I'm your favorite person. I was like, oh yeah. Well, besides, besides Reed. Besides oh, Reed. Trust, trust um, me, we're, gonna get, we're hoping to get Reed on, um, you know, we hope you can help us set up that too. So we can get Reed yes, to absolutely. Ca- counter absolutely. this interview, Josh, by, you know, saying <laughs> that John's his favorite person or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, a- absolutely. He probably would. <laughs> but I, I think that uh, kind he of says, he says hi. By the way, though. hi, Reed. Hello, Reed. Um, <laughs> I I think it's fascinating you mentioned that with Jacqueline because I kind of think that sums up Jacqueline in in your season because she she was so invisible, I guess you would say on, on the edit. And early on, we were all like, Oh, well, she's gone next week. Jacqueline's gone. She's not going to last. Right. And then by the end of the right. game, um, we're all in love with her and we all are wanting her to win the game. So like, Absolutely. how it all turns around. Like yeah. that. It's fascinating. It does. It does turn around. And the thing is like, I always love, like Jacqueline is a great person. So like, she's great to ha- have out on the Island. She was so fun to talk to. Um, she did the work that she needed to do around camp. Like, she was great. Um, it just, we just never at the beginning connected stra- um, strategically. And so that's why that never really formed. And then obviously once the merge happened, um, trying to get John and Jacqueline back with us, which was successful, by the way, um, until Julie quit. <laughs> and then there was time for Alec to run his mouth a little bit and, <laughs> Then, you know, that was the big Jacqueline decided to switch and she had to take John with her. So, mm. and then that was my demise. <laughs> yes. I will get to that. I, I think it's, it's kind of, it's it's appropriate that you've just gotten Reed with you just then. Because my next question was, how did it feel to reunite with Reed at the swap when you've literally just reunited with Reed during this interview? So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect timing. Um, yeah. You know, it, it was, it was awesome. Like, it was weird playing opposite your loved one for so long. And I think this was, we were at like day 11 or 12 when the tribe swap ha- happened. And there's so much you want to say and, and so much you want to talk about. And no one knows what the teams are going to be, obviously, for the tribe swap. And once we saw that we were together, like our initial thing was like excitement that we get to be together. And then the other, the next thing is like, wait, it's good that we're together because now we're going to be a bigger target because we're both together. This is, and that was like, oh dear, this is, this might be bad. But, you know, as, as I would have it, it was me and Reed and Alec and Wes. And then you had Jeremy, Julie and Natalie. And so I was like, oh, I think we're okay. <laughs> um, but it was wonderful reuniting. Obviously it was great. Cause all of a sudden you got to talk about, so many things and you got to say things that you couldn't even say to your other like Wes and Alec because I was able to share with Reed about how I was kind of controlling that and but trying to make them feel like they were in charge and making sure that they felt comfortable always and things like that so yeah I mean, it's interesting too I guess because at that point um, you know again Koyopa lose a couple we don't really get to see a whole lot of um, you Hanapu before right, the merge right. I mean yeah. what what was really happening besides obviously you guys struggling with food what was some of the things that were happening that we <laughs> maybe didn't get to see a whole lot of um, you know what we did a lot of like we would go clamming a lot um, as a group all of us um, I you know what we and I chatted with Jeremy um that wasn't shown very much. We were trying to get Jeremy on board with us. We weren't really um, connected to Jeremy, but we were trying to get him to change and um, not stay with Natalie and um, Julie Mm -hmm. and to come with us and be like, hey, you know what? We we were trying because it wasn't... We didn't really want to take him very far, but he was very pushy and saying, okay, guys, let's, let's us stay together and we'll take... Um, us two and Natalie and Julie and he was he was trying to get his 
things in there. And we were like, no, why don't you come with, you know, Wes and Alec? And, uh, you know, it was like one of those kind of things. So it was a little half-hearted, but we had lots of conversations. And um, we actually had a lot of great times out there with that group of seven. We had a blast. Um, just like, I don't know about the rain. There was the rainy night. That wasn't a blast when Julie Julie almost quit that night. If it hadn't been for Reed consoling her, we sang karaoke <laughs> underneath the uh, at the shelter um, uh, with a little fire, and we sang karaoke almost the entire night because it was pouring Fantastic. rain, and it was the only thing. It was the only thing that was keeping us going. Um, <laughs> Julie was like, Julie was like in tears, and we're all like singing like all these different songs. It was, it was actually a really special moment. Like I look back on that and be like, wow, that happened. We were yeah. on Survivor, huddled under the shelter in the pouring rain by a little fire, <laughs> trying to keep our spirits up. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so things like that, and then just you know daily life, wishing there was more food. <laughs> yes. What was was there much of a a chance or a kind of an opinion that you would throw that challenge? Because I think it's been discussed, hasn't it? That there was that thought process yes. to throw to get rid of Jeremy at that point. Yeah the the challenge where we had to climb over the wall and push the thing, and then the dragon um, puzzle at the end that Reed and I ended up winning. There was def- Reed and I had multiple conversations about whether or not to throw that challenge to take Jeremy out. Um, because Kelly had just gone home on Coyopa the week, the the one before, and we were like, if we could take Jeremy out, or even Natalie at this point, because Natalie was such, start, we were like, wow, she's a, a beast in challenges, and she's not, at least Jeremy's more of a threat than Natalie, so maybe Natalie actually should be the one to go. But um, I think we kind of settled on Jeremy that we would have uh, taken home unless we thought he had an idol. Um but the, the the problem came down to, we're like, you know, as fans of Survivor, do we not throw a challenge because we want to stay true to, like, the game and be like, play the game as hard as possible and, like, give this challenge our all? Or do we throw the challenge when, in the past, everything we've seen has been just really catastrophe? Once someone throws a challenge, something always is crazy and it skews the result and someone else a lot of times usually goes home who wasn't planning on going home and um, just like Drew, you know, him throwing the challenge right before and then he goes home. And like, what a perfect, you know, a scary um, little thing right before. So, I don't know. So, we, we did discuss it and we went back and forth but we finally settled uh, uh, uh. Um, you know what, let's just let our habitats go as hard as we can. Was it the right decision, looking back? I don't know. It, I guess it's still playing the game hard if you make the decision to throw something to try to take someone else out. That's still playing the game. And I guess in that moment we were thinking we wanted to just play to, uh, like, be true to who we were as far as athletes. Mm. And um, maybe we should have gone the other way, but... Who knows if Jeremy would have gone home or Natalie that night, and Dale would have stayed in the game, and we would have had much more numbers going into the merge. But yeah, it's interesting to look at it though with that, because again, the what ifs there, Josh. A lot of could have happened. I mean, you could also look at it: had you guys not sung karaoke to Julie that night, she quit. Then does that change it moving forward? Who knows? Like an early quit by Julie before the merge could have changed things up, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah, if Julie had quit um, that night in the rain, I just man, that would have, I don't know if we would have not, again, not had tribal council that night, and then Dale would have stayed in the game, and then uh, that would have been basically six on six, and if we could have gotten John and Jacqueline, that would have been eight to four. Mm. Um, yeah, it's that's an interesting interesting thought, too. Um, funnily enough, we were the one, you know, Reed was the one, we were all like, no, Julie, you need to stay, you need to stay, you've got this, and so uh, I don't know. I think we were just, you know, 
being nice and the niceness was coming out instead of, you know, being like, yeah, let's get rid of this girl. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll go be- home. Yeah, this is horrible. Go <laughs> home. It's freezing. Leave. No food. <laughs> yeah, leave. Get out of here. Well, that, I mean, you mentioned, of course, Julie quitting and kind of how that changed things up because John and Jacqueline were on board with you before she did. I mean, I guess that quit yeah. from so many angles from both you and Reed's perspective was frustrating because not only because it sort of screws you guys in the game, but you're both fans of Survivor and, of course, fans of Survivor yeah. don't really like quitters of the show. And I mean, I guess at no. that point, did you just want to kind of run off, say a few choice words and, like, punch a tree? Oh, okay, well, see, well later I did. In that exact <laughs> moment, I was like... I, I, my thought was when Jeff came out on the beach and we were all sitting there on that log and he tells us that she's, you know, gone and we don't have tribal council, my first reaction was, well, good riddance. Of course she went. Of course she quit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, whatever, you know. But then it was not until later I was like, wait, if we had gone to tribal tonight, they, like, it was, wait, Jeremy... Who had the no Keith had the um the immunity. Jeremy would have gone home. Um and so I was like, ooh, this might be a bad thing because right now we have the plan, but it may be in three days the plan will change. Yikes. And then three days later, that's when I wanted to punch the tree um <laughs> once I realized what had happened and that John and Jacqueline had truly switched. I was like, Where's Julie? Where is she? <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm like, I was like, John better protect her. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fascinating how it all played out. And that episode, I, I loved how that was edited because we got this real true rivalry. You know, it was you versus Jeremy. It was this epic yeah. sort of battle. And it's kind of, I mean, we've, we've had battles, of course, in the history of Survivor, but it's hard to kind of think of a specific season where it was just so skewed between two people so yeah. openly. And I mean, I guess watching that, that must have been fun. Yeah, it was, it was, I thought they did a really good job editing it. I actually laughed so many times because I was like, oh, this, they just loved what we were doing. <laughs> Jeremy and I were just going at it back and forth. And I mean, you can't even write a better script when it was us two in that final immunity. Um, we, it was, everyone else was out and we were doing the puzzle, I mean, the, the memory challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I actually looked over at that point and it was just Jeremy and I standing there and I was like, this is hilarious, really. Of all the people here, it's Jeremy and I doing this final thing because basically whoever does not win this is going home. Mm-hmm. Like, and and it was funny because I didn't even think I was going to be good at that challenge. I thought I would have been out like second or third in that mm-hmm. challenge. I just I t- had told Reed that way before when we were getting ready to go out on Survivor. I was like, I'm horrible at those memory challenges. I'll never be good. <laughs> That's just not my thing. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the final two, and I was like. And I think I just choked. I couldn't believe that I had gotten that far, and now Jeff was giving us, like, eight things to remember, and you don't have any food in your system, and the sun is beating down on you, and I was just like, I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is awful. And right when I put the wrong one up, I knew I was the one who was wrong, and and then I also knew I was going home. I was like, I think I just sealed my fate. Mm-hmm. I think that was it. Mm. Do you think had you won that um, the the switch in terms of the vote there like that would have been for Jeremy that night that maybe John and Jacqueline would have been swayed to go for Jeremy that night? I I think um, from talking with John from knowledge now, um, I think um, John would have ended up convincing Jacqueline to vote Jeremy out that night mm-hmm. um, if I had won immunity um, because she was still upset at Alec and Wes, but. John really wanted to go with us. And so if Jeremy was, you know, up for being able to be taken out, I think John would have recognized that Jeremy needed to go and convince Jacqueline that Jeremy should is the strongest competitor to go at this moment. Hmm. So yeah, I think I think that um I think that probably would have happened. Jeremy would have probably gone. Um I don't think he thinks that. <laughs> but, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's It must have been interesting, sort of going back to what we're saying about when you get to watch it, because, I mean, how much did you know of how much, of how Alec was sort of running his mouth at that point and really pissing Jacqueline off and all that stuff that I was didn't going know. on? You didn't know at all? 
No, I did not know that um, uh, that was happening. I didn't. That's why I didn't know why John and Jacqueline had suddenly switched. And they weren't telling us they switched. They were lying to our face still and being like, "No, we're still going with you." Blah blah blah. But I could tell something had changed, and I didn't understand what had changed. I didn't understand why. Um, and there was no way of talking to John and Jacqueline about it because they were telling us they were going with us. They were like, no, we're still with you guys. We're still on your side. We're voting with you. So you can't be like, no, you're not. You're lying. Why are you lying? Because then you're like betraying trust if someone is staying with you. So um, I, it was really frustrating for me because I was like, I have no idea why this happened. And so I didn't find out why until later on at Ponderosa when, you know, other people start coming back in and I started getting the full story. And I was like, oh, oh, really? <laughs> I was like, that's why. Damn it, Alec. I hate my life. <laughs> I know, damn it. Oh, uh, it must have been so frustrating. But I could imagine, I mean, obviously, stupid question, how does it feel getting voted out? I'm not going to ask you that one, Josh. But, I mean, I guess being the first <laughs> jury member, I mean, that must be a weird situation. Or is it a good thing? Because you get a few days to be by yourself and, I guess, just relax a little bit. Yeah, I mean, once I accepted my fate and I was like, I need to not be upset that I'm out of the game right now because I can't change the fact that I'm out of the game right now. I am out. I lost fair and square. So this is it. I was like, I'm here at this. Um, and the place in Nicaragua was beautiful. Pondera, you guys got to see the things if you watch the Ponderosa yes. videos. It's, it was beautiful. And I was not expecting that, like going, um, getting voted off. I, I mean, I thought I would be at this like rinky dink hotel. Um, and it was just this gorgeous place. And, so once I really was like, okay, I'm here. I'm going to be here for another, what, 15, 16 days. I forget how long it, uh, maybe 14. It sounded something like that. I had two weeks, actually, at Ponderosa. And I was like, you know what? Enjoy this. Enjoy this. Think of this as a vacation. Free food, a pool, you know. Um, and I, those three days by myself were so... It was so interesting because I got to think about the whole game. I got to think about Reed and I's relationship. I just, I thought about how lucky I was to be able to even have this experience. Um, so it was a really cool time just to be by myself. Um, and then Jeremy showed up. Yes. Which we, uh, yeah, which it was actually nice to get to know Jeremy outside of the game and be like, you know what, now we're just normal people we can be, like, normal to each other. Well, it must have been a, a great thing to see him get voted out first, sort of as like, yes, well, he's gone, he's not going to win. But there, kind of, I guess... Uh, when you was. When you see, when you get back to Ponderosa initially and you kind of, I guess, get over that initial hump that you guys had in the game and you get to know him, I mean, it, it did seem like you guys really did get along well at Ponderosa. Yeah, yeah, because I think we respected each other a lot and how we were... Um, playing the game, and we recognized each other as strong competitors. And um, that once we got out to Ponferosa, it was like, okay, you know what? It kind of makes sense that we were one and two, like that they took us out as as kind of idiotic that some of their plans were. They were smart in like pointing at us and being like, wait, they know what they're doing. Take them out. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like that is that is a very smart play. And so I. I can't fault them for taking us out, but I think we kind of bonded over that thing. Like, you know what? They took us out because they were too threatened by us, not because they didn't like us, not because we weren't doing well or whatever. It was just because they were like, no, these guys have a chance of winning. They need to go. Yeah, yeah. And this is, so, what, this and, is what's and, great about your season is that, and I mean, I'm a huge advocate for your season. A lot of people who work on our show are Josh. Is that at this point of the season, it was all like, okay, Josh and Jeremy are going to win. As soon as you go home, well, Jeremy right. won the game. Right. And that was probably the way that was edited stands up. And I think we had a top 10, top 10 biggest uh, viewer blind sides in terms of the viewer yeah. was shocked. And we put Jeremy's at number one because I watching yeah. that was like, what the fuck just happened? How did he go yeah. home? And it was, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I was blindsided when, because when I went out of the game, I was like, I knew that I was going. Like, I was like, yeah, that's that. But then I was like, oh, great. So Reed's going to be next. Like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, and I was just praying that he would figure out a way. And I was like, Reed is so smart. And um, I knew he, I was like, he can somehow work things. I know he can do this. But I was like, oh, it looks from where I was sitting, it looked hopeless. And I got to that tribal council that night. 
and watching it, and I was like, wait, something else is going on. Something else is happening. Like, I was like, what is happening? And then Jeremy goes, and I was blindsided just as much, and I was like, I cannot believe this. This is amazing. And I was like, how perfect for the season, I mean, to have this rivalry. And then I go out, and Jeremy goes out. Like, yeah. it's it, it's it's pretty epic. It really is. And, yeah, I don't... What are those? Who are those people saying they didn't like our season? It was great. I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you. I'll give you their numbers and their names. I'll give, give you me, all their contact details. Give me details. names and numbers. <laughs> I'm going to stick John Rocker on them. They better Do watch it. out. Do it. Oh, God, they're screwed now. Um, but, yeah, it's it's interesting kind of the feedback because um, we did a top 10 a couple of weeks ago. It was top 10 reasons why someone del is better than Worlds Apart and then top 10 reasons why Worlds Apart is better than someone del Sur. And I felt we got right. more comments and uh, reaction uh, on the positive side with someone del Sur better than Worlds Apart because it was it was kind of interesting how particularly someone like Jeff Probst would gel over your season a lot because he was talking up Worlds Apart so much and then I feel yep. that the, the reception to Worlds Apart was probably a little bit more negative than it was for your season. Oh, absolutely. I was really looking forward to Worlds Apart because I, I in a way, because Jeff talked it up so much and I, I mean, which we were kind of all kind of sad about because I felt like he a little bit overlooked our season and was focused on Worlds Apart already and that's, I think that's the uh, the problem with filming two epi- seasons back to back, you aut- automatically get partial to one season, mm. um, and so I think that's probably what happened with us and Worlds Apart that he got partial to Worlds Apart, and so he put everything into that. But I think they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit with Worlds Apart as far as production went because Second Chance totally overshadowed the last, like, four episodes of Worlds Apart, no one cared any... I think no one cared anymore about Worlds Apart the last four episodes. Like, people are like, hmm, okay, whatever. What's happening with S- Second Chance? Oh, yeah, oh, right, this new episode of... Okay, whatever. And kind of moving past it, I felt like... Um, so I think that was one of the errors. And I think, too, I think there were a lot more just... people on Survivor Worlds Apart that just were not fun to watch. I think they, yeah. they might be fine outside of the game, but some things in the show for me, and I know there were some of us on, and some people would say that I was not fun to watch, which is fine. Everyone has their own opinions. Sure. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, it is interesting. Of course, I'm going to say I'm partial to San Juan del Sur, of course. Yeah, it's it's fascinating, and um, I mean, we I, I remember when the season was airing. Noah and I, particularly, um, we just every week would be glowing in our weekly episodes, saying we loved this season because it was getting a lot of negative reception, and we put a lot of that down to it followed Cagayan, which obviously was such a loved season, and um, yeah, it was. We just yeah, felt every week it true. was our right to defend your season, and I still will because thank I, you. I, I, I love saw that, actually. Episode. I read a lot of that. I read a lot of your stuff during the season, and I was like, these guys are really advocating for us, and I am thrilled. Well, I've, I've rewatched it already, and it, it holds up even better on a rewatch, I feel. So, I just. Oh, putting awesome. it out there I to people. Have n- I have not rewatched it, actually. I watched it the first two episodes the other day randomly because someone. I was at a friend's house, and their mom was watching it, and they're like, <laughs> we wanted to see this because. And I was like, oh, and I started watching it, and Reed and I were both there, and we were like, Oh, this is so weird. I don't know if I can watch this right now. This is it. No. <laughs> well, I'll put that into comparison for you. Uh, John Carroll from Marquesas hadn't watched any of his season, I think, in about 10 years. He would get to say his boot oh episode my and couldn't do it. We do commentaries, and we got him on to com- do commentaries of his entire season. And it was interesting to sort of be sitting there with him as he's cringing, as he's getting voted out. Then all the episodes afterwards that he'd never watched since it had aired because he just uh, couldn't stomach wow. it. So it might take you 10 years, right. Josh, before you can watch your season again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Now, we've got some listed questions to get to in just a moment, and I'll, of course, wrap it up with our final five. But I just want to find out, in terms of um, Reed's speech that we all very much know about, and we'll talk to Reed about that when we get him on the show, but how much did you right. sort of know about that? I mean, did he kind of practice that with you going into uh, Final Tribal Council at all? Um. Like, no, not fully. Like, I had an idea um, of what of what he wanted to say be- for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, and But he, you know, is very much like spur to the moment kind of thing. And he's like, I have these ideas. This is kind of what I want to say. Like, this this idea and this concept because I really want to get a point across. And, I was, and we were like, I was like, yeah, this, 
this is great. This is going to be good. And, uh, and we both talked about it, like, make sure it just comes off naturally. And he's such a smart person with words. Um, he's, I'm always shocked by his vocabulary and what he can do. So you don't want to get on his bad side, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, I was, yeah, I was, th- I was thrilled when he was saying the things and it's interesting. I, that I found because, you know, obviously, um, in the edit, you only see Reed really going after Missy and there were five of us on the jury, six of us on the jury who went after Missy in, in that uh, final, in that final tribal. And they only showed Reed's because his was the most eloquent. And I think a lot of people got on to Reed for going after Missy so hard when it would have made much more sense if they had shown everyone going after her because then it would have been like, oh, so everyone thought this way about her. And everyone did. And so, and Pat needed to say something about it. So, um, yeah, but I, I think the, the speech is pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. And did you did you go into that um, always planning to vote for Natalie? Were your opinions swayed at all by anything that was said that night? No, I mean, I, I was going, I was going in voting for Natalie, um, and I knew that I was, and I knew that you know that Reed was going in to vote for Jacqueline because he wanted, you know, Jacqueline, you know, because you're voted, he voted for a second place, and I think that's really smart, um, because the second place should get the second place, and there shouldn't be a tie if one person should have been second place when everyone voted for the winner. So he would here we already knew that Natalie was going to w- win basically from like p- what we knew of everyone else talking, right? So yeah. it was like, okay, if I vote for Jacqueline, she's going to get second and so it was like perfect. Yeah, yeah, and it So out. and also because we knew that she wanted, you know, Jacqueline, you know, with her whole she needs a surrogate to have a baby and everything and just um how Reed and I feel towards that, we really wanted to Especially Reed really was like, I want to give this to her to make sure she gets more money for second place so that she can um, use it for a surrogate once she gets, once they want to have a baby. Fantastic. Well, it worked out well and she obviously got second. So there you go. Um, now, yes, we, mentioned, she did. we mentioned second chances. Got to ask the question, Josh, you and Reed, <laughs> how close were you to being on that list? Um... I mean, technically, we're not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> oh, come on, Josh. Come on. I know you um, want to mention. Here you go. You come on. No, you know. Um, <laughs> I will. I will say because I don't think it. I don't think it's a big uh, saying. This I don't think is really crossing any lines because I don't think there's a big issue to it. Um, I was called. Right. Um, I was called for it. Okay. But I was doing a Broadway show. Ah, right. Okay. I I had I had a con I had a contract um, already um, with my show that I was in here in New York and that I could not get out of it. And honestly, if I'm I didn't want to get out of it because I love Survivor and but Survivor is not like my job. Um, you know, acting and is my job, and so. I want to, like, my career, you know, kind of comes first, and I didn't want to, like, back out of a Broadway contract to do Survivor again when I need Broadway to keep going, <laughs> and Survivor's not going to keep giving me life and <laughs> money for food and a living. So I was like, as much as I would love to do Survivor again, it would have to be at the right time, at the right moment in my life again to be able to get to do it Um so I mean I would still love to, I would love to go back I would do it in a heartbeat if um, it was at the right if everything aligned in my life. Well, having said that, with the cast now, it, it's kind of uh, interesting asking this question now because obviously everyone's back from this season. Um, so look, we don't know what's out there and spoilers. We don't want to know spoilers if you know anything, of course. But um, right, uh, I will not say anything. Beautiful. Well, but I mean, what do you what do you think the chance of Jeremy Keith and Kelly? I mean, you're glad that we've got three representatives from your season out there giving it another crack? I was. I was like, well, at least there's three um, San Juan del Sur people out there, and I, I hope I'm rooting for all three of them because I, in one sense, they're, you know, kind of like our season and our family, and so I'm rooting for all three of them, definitely. I mean, there, I've got other 
ones that I'm rooting for as well. But I'm definitely rooting for Keith, Jeremy, and Kelly because I want to see them do good, and I want to see them. They kind of represent our season in a way. So um, I want them to do amazing. Well, we'll get you back on during the season to just chat about that because I think it'll be an interesting perspective to um, sort of, particularly with Jeremy on there, you know, the heated rivalry yeah. that we talked about. So um, we'll see how we go. Yeah, with that. I, I, we... We were texting right before he left, and um, he was like, I really wish you were out here with me, man, and I wish you were coming. And I was like, I do too. Um, I'm really excited that you get to do this, though. I, I, w- I hope you go out there and just kill it. And we have a, we have a good bond like that because we, you know, kind of have a connection there Fantastic. with our season. We like hearing that when it all comes down to it. Now, just before we get to these other questions, Josh, you mentioned about Broadway. Uh, just an update on how things are going with you. You're still uh, out there performing and um, just doing doing the thing oh, you out know. here in New York? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, doing the, the daily grind out here in New York. Um, I'm currently working on a show that I personally wrote. Um, Great. And so I've been, yeah, working on that. And my next gig i'm trying to think my next gig is not till november i'm doing another show in november so fantastic fantastic i had the uh i was in new york a few years ago i got to see a broadway show and i i'm not a oh huge, you did not a huge theater fan but i loved it i really that's did okay it. yeah that's okay so. which show did you see i saw phantom of the opera i had to go see the uh you know the the one uh, the does, longest but, running yes. yes the one that everyone goes well Next time you're in town, you let me know, and I'll point you in the direction of a play that you'll like really like. Sounds good. I will. That's um, that's that's a date. Maybe I'll, we I'll make can sure of it. We <laughs> can change that uh, perspective of you not liking theater. I'll change yes, it for you. Please do. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, now, listener questions. Uh, thanks everyone who sent this in. As always with listener questions, of course, a lot of these do get answered throughout the main part of the interview. So I'm not ignoring your questions if I do not read your name out. Um, Let's see here. Nick Chester, one of our Oslets, kind of touched on a little bit here, but he says, I would really be interested in your thoughts on Missy. What did you think of how her story was told on the show? Reed certainly indicated that there were lots of comments she made that didn't make the show, which were possibly homophobic. Can you give us any more details on this? Yeah, I mean, I think with everyone's... uh edits, you know, a lot of things obviously are not shown on the show that people have said, um, and that's the way with all of us. There's tons of things. So um, with Missy, yeah, I, I guess I would have liked, uh, in one sense, I would want those comments, some of the comments that she did make and some of the, the things that she did say to read and um, to myself, I wish they would have been aired, but then Part of me doesn't want that even out there, mm. and because it's just, it's just not um, pleasant, and it's not something that I want to promote. And so I'm actually grateful that some of those comments weren't out there. Mm. Um, yeah, I just Missy, Missy's an interesting person. Um, you know, they get a lot of us interesting people on the show. So she's another very unique individual, and we're all under lots of pressure when we're out there. And, yeah, she said some things that were very hurtful, and the way she treated, um, especially Reed, there was really inappropriate in a lot of ways. Um, and they did not show a lot of that, which is, mm-hmm. which, in, yeah, like I said, it, which in one sense is a little sad. I wish they would have showed it because it would have made more sense why Reed did that speech at the end. Um, but I think they did, I don't, I think part of her true character did come through in the show, and I think that's the case because I think a lot of people did not warm to her uh, watching the show. And even though she didn't have a lot of moments where you didn't, there wasn't anything she did that you were like, oh, I hate that that she did that, there was just something about her that people were like, hmm, not feeling her very much. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes to kind of show you, you know, more into someone's character. Sure. Sure. Fascinating. Thanks, Nick. Um, Ori Kohav, did Baylor really turn on you because of just one vote at the first tribal council, or was it just an excuse to hiding in her mother's shadow? I see a theme in these questions here, Josh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I see that. Uh, Missy and Baylor. Um, I personally don't think it had anything to do with that vote at the beginning. Baylor was 20 years old. She was very impressionable, and I think she took the, my when I told her why I voted for her hook, line, and sinker, and she had no problem with it, um, I, I think she was like, oh, that's weird. I don't like being voted for. Obviously, if that had happened to me, I would have been the same way. 
Um, but we got over that and we got beyond that. And I really think that it just ended up being her mom that swayed her and she had to follow her mom. And because it, they showed that little clip of her being like, I just feel bad voting for Josh. And her mom was like, this is a game. You can't feel bad, which was true. Missy is accurate. This is a game. You shouldn't feel bad. But it it's a very indicative of Baylor and I's relationship because she was feeling bad for kind of turning on me because even after that one vote, the next vote, I saved her. I could have sent her home that night if I would have voted for her instead of Val on that um, at the vote. And I knew I was the, the deciding vote. So I could have sent her home that night. I didn't. Um, and I kept her in the game and we kept such good, like, whatever you can be friends on the show until her mom got there. And all of a sudden she totally switched everything her mom said she did. And that was a little disappointing, but it makes sense because she was kind of, you know, under her mom and she was like, Oh, now I defer to mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fascinating. All right. Let's find a non Bailey Missa related question here. (laughs) Um, Glenn Montgomery. This is a good one. During Survivor Someone Del Sur, it quickly became evident that you were the most well-liked member of Coyopa. And we saw you develop close relationships with many people who seemed very different than you, such as Rocker, Wes, Alec, Dale, and Keith. Is this just a natural ability you possess, or do you have certain life experiences that have helped you hone this skill of being able to connect with lots of different types of people? Wow. Very in depth there, Glenn. (laughs) Yeah. Well done, Glenn. Um, Interesting. Um, I guess um, I'll first address that tribal council where it was pointed out that whatever that I was the most well-liked, that was scary and terrifying. When you're on Survivor and everyone points at you and saying that you're the most well-liked because there's the first target. No one wants to have the person who's the most well-liked and take them to the end. So that freaked me out. Um, and I was like, uh-oh, I'm being, <laughs> I'm being too nice. I'm being too personable to people because, and they're going to eventually take me out because you don't want that person. You can't take that person with you. Um, so that scared me. Um, the reason I think the reason why I'm, I guess I'm able to relate to a lot of people who may not fall in line with the same belief system as me or the same, um, uh, any kind of thing, anything you want to say, different, um, worldview, a different, um, job, whatever. I think working in theater, every time I'm in a show, I, I'm with a different cast. And it's almost like going to school all over again, every show. And you meet a brand new group of people and you're able to experience so much and you connect so much with those people. It's kind of like a survivor situation in a way. Um, It's a cast. And learning about all those experiences and seeing how to relate to different people who have gone through different things in life. Um, Everyone in theater has come from different backgrounds and have different beliefs, but somehow you connect and you really come together to create this amazing creative product in this play that you're doing and that you rely on each other and you have to trust each other while you're on stage um, because it's live. It's not on a camera where, you know, you can redo this take and redo this take. No, you have to do it right every single time. And so you're relying on your fellow actors. And I think that all comes into play when I went out to um, Survivor is that I think I can relate to people of different backgrounds and um, different walks of life and find the common unity that, and be able to pull that in and make that the primary focus and then branch out into other things and learn more about um, the differences that we experience. Like, you know, with Wes and, Wes and Alex, they had never met an out gay person before. And that wasn't the primary focus at the start. I was just being their friend. I was talking with them about, you know, the, the, the fishing that Alex loves to do and that I grew up on a lake fishing with my grandpa. And, like, you go to those places. And, and then as you start getting to know people, you are able to have more intimate conversations about differences. And they don't need to change. Differences are good. Um, but it's nice to be able to talk about them and to learn about them. I hope that helps. Great answer. Fantastic. Great question, Glenn. Well done. Um, now, a couple quick ones here before we get to our final ones. Um, let's see here. This isn't a question. This is like a comment. Jeremy Wickler, if Julie hadn't quit, you would have been the sole survivor. Wouldn't that have been neat? Can't wait to see you back on Survivor. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, uh, Jeremiah Wickler. Yes. Um, that, yes. That is a 
a great question. Um, no, I. That's hilarious. <laughs> what a wonderful um, fantasy to be able to have. Uh, yes. yes, I would love to say yes. If Julie didn't quit, I would be the sole survivor. <laughs> I like that idea. Done. Well, Here's a sort of a similar one. Chris, uh, no last name given, just says, Hi, Josh. If Baylor had been voted out at the Tribal Council, you were eliminated. What would have been your post-merge plan to the final three? Oh, interesting. So if Baylor went out instead of me that night? Yes. Oof. Um, if Baylor had gone out... Let's see, that would mean John and Jacqueline would have voted with us and voted Baylor out. Um, Jeremy had... I still think I would have taken Jeremy out at the next possible moment because I knew that he was the biggest threat. Um, and once Jeremy was out, it would probably have been Natalie because I just... I would have been too scared about her. I would probably, I would have probably tried to keep Missy in at that point because I think the majority of people didn't like her. And so she needed to stay because no one was going to vote for her. So it didn't matter. So next up would have probably been, it might've been John or it actually could have been Alec, mm -hmm. um, uh, potentially. Oh, Keith was in still as well. Uh, no, you don't need to take Keith in. That's interesting. I haven't really thought about how, the lineup of how things would have gone. Um, what we do know is Reed and I would have, um, probably not gone to the final two together. We would have voted one of us out because we don't. We wouldn't have wanted to split votes if we were both were in the final tribal. And how do you decide that? So how do you decide who gets voted I, out? That, <laughs> oh man, that would have been a conversation, wouldn't it? Um, I think it. I, do, you, do you know what it would have come down to? It would have come down to the jury and like actually thinking through and be like, would this person vote for you? Would this person vote for you? And basically, if we could come up with the idea of who would get the most votes out of Vita Rai, the other person would need to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fascinating. So, Fascinating. All right. Yeah. Two quick fire ones here for our final five. RB Liljestrom, I love this question. Are you going to let Baylor sing Sticky Situation at your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to say probably not. No. I don't think the situation is going to be at the wedding. Maybe the reception. How about the okay. reception? C can you give us a bit Maybe of sticky that. situation, Josh? Do you want to sing a bit of it for us? You, you know, I think I'm going to pass. I did listen <laughs> to it because I, I needed to know what it was because I had to have, you know, the idea of what everyone was talking about. So I did go watch it. Um, but I think, I think I'm going to pass on singing it. All right. All right. Uh, final one here. This is interesting. Particularly for Ed Steele with you. Harold Rice, who was the stronger player overall, you or Reed? Oh, now you're just trying to make a rift between Reed and I. <laughs> yeah. Got to make the next interview exciting. Come on now, Josh. <laughs> I know. I, you know what? I, I think Reed and I are both very strong, and I'm going to say that it just depends on the group of people you're with and how you go into the game. I think we saw one thing because um, of you saw more of me in San Juan del Sur because of what happened with how Coyopa kept losing and what ended up happening with the rivalry between Jeremy and I. But if it was a different situation and it started on a different day or um, there were two different people switched, you know, it would have been totally different. And maybe you would have seen Reed do so much more and I wouldn't have been doing very much. So it's really hard to say. I'm going to say we're both great players. <laughs> great political answer. You'd make a good politician. I know. Well done. <laughs> well done. All right. Thanks, everyone, who sent those questions in. Josh, we wrap up every interview with a set of quick fire. Five questions. Yes. These are all opinion-based. Yes. You're a Survivor fan. You're going to give some great answers to this one. Question number one. What are three things all you right. learnt about Jeff Probst during your time on Survivor? Oh my gosh, three things that I learned. That I want to be his best friend <laughs> and go out having and have a drink with him and just rack his brain. <laughs> um, that I love his um that I love his mom and dad. Mm -hmm. His mom is just so wonderful. Love his mom. And that he sometimes doesn't wear blue shirts. Ah, oh, it's a shock, isn't it, when you see him not wearing those blue shirts? <laughs> <laughs> 
We had a count. We um Absolutely. back in one world. We um we try to count how many because we used to ask that question: how many shirts does Jeff Probst wear during a season? And I actually one right. of the I think two interactions I've ever had with Jeff Probst on Reddit. He did an AMA and he actually answered my question when I asked him how many does he wear a season. And I think he said he's got about six or seven. And I thought it would be more than oh, that. Oh really? Because, yeah. So. Oh, just six or se- I know. I would have think I would have thought it would be more than six or seven as well. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. We get him on this show. I'll, I'll be grilling about that for the entire uh, interview. Trust me, Josh. Uh, question yeah. number two. What is your <laughs> favorite and least favorite season of Survivor? Ah. Uh, mm, um, favorite? I know it's uh, very much a lot of people's favorites, but I think, I think I really liked Heroes versus Villains. I really enjoyed that season. Um, I also really loved Micronesia. Um, I, I have so many favorites. I, I, it's really hard to like just say like one favorite, but I guess those are the first two that pop into my head. Micronesia is mm-hmm. my poverty one, right? Yes, that's Am correct. I right in thinking that? Yeah, okay. I was like, wait, I don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I just said that right. Um, yeah, I, would, I really enjoyed those two. Um, of course, I could just I could list so many that I love. Um, as far as least favorite. Again, a popular one, which you guys, I think I just saw something, a post where you were saying how Nicaragua, Survivor Nicaragua had so many endearing qualities. I still think it was a little, it's not that it's, it's just, it's still a great season, but it's at the bottom. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, um, Nicaragua. Yeah, it's, it's one of those yeah, ones that, yeah. And I, I'm not a huge fan of Vanuatu, um, to be honest. I, li- I love Eliza on it, and if she would have won, it would have been so much better. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of Chris as a winner. Okay. Um, so I'd probably put that one closer to the bottom as well. Well, I, I won't grill you on that part where you just said, because that will tie into a question I'll ask in a moment. Because, uh, question number three, though, is the easiest one in the world. I already know your answer, but I'll ask it to you anyway. Who is the sexiest ever Survivor contestant? Uh, Reed Kelly. Of course, yes. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, question number four. You can answer yourself for this one if you want to, or Reed. Uh, who to you is the greatest player never to have won? Oh, wow. Never to have won, the greatest mm. player. Um, I mean, of course I'm going to say me, obviously. <laughs> I mean, that's just a given. I'm trying to think of something more interesting than saying myself, but of course myself. <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> Maybe I'm going to go with uh, Spencer as well. I okay. think he was really great. I think he did a really great job. And, um, yeah, I'm glad he got a second chance. He deserved that. We'll see how he turns out next season. Now, the, I'll follow up on what you just said about Chris, because I don't. he might be your answer for this question. I don't know. Who is your least favorite winner? Hmm. I, yeah, I'm not sure if I think Chris is my least favorite winner. I just am not a huge fan of him as a winner. Is he my least favorite? I, um, it's hard to say a least favorite because I, if you won Survivor, that is just the hugest, the hugest, is that a word? The biggest, um, like, it's so epic. You won. You got through that entire thing, and especially after experiencing it, like, getting to the end, to the final three, and then winning that, like, you deserve respect. You know what I mean? Like, I, so to say someone is like, uh, that's, that's really hard. We I changed the wording. Wanna... Uh, we changed the wording of that question, I will say, Josh. We used to ask who is the uh, most uh, undeserving winner or something along those uh, lines. So we, we changed yeah. the wording. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess I, I guess I'll throw Chris. I can't just because I can't think of anybody else right now. Sure. And, so I guess I'll just. Was there any particular reason why you weren't a huge fan of Chris's? Or not to shit on Chris, of course, but just to. Find... No, no, and it's not. It's not that I don't. I just there, I didn't connect to him at all watching mm-hmm. that season, and um, there were other. I, I don't know. I, I, it's been about a year and a half, I think, since I've watched Vanuatu, but I, I didn't feel any connection with him I guess where other winners I felt like I was really happy they won I was a little like eh, okay I think we all had those seasons we all had, had those seasons with yeah. The winner, so yeah. yeah for sure all right I mean he obviously obviously he did a great job he won so yeah. he is amazing and he did a great job and I bow to him yes <laughs> <So>. <laughs> good 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 um good 
uh, feedback. Good um, save. That's what I'm trying to say. I can't even put my words in my mouth there, Josh. Uh, all right, here we go, Josh. Final question. In the history of Survivor, who to you is the greatest ever player and why? I'm going to have to go with Parvati Shallow because I love her to death and I think she used exactly her um, qualities to get herself to the end, like close to the end, so many times and winning. Um, and I know a lot of people say Sandra because she won twice, um, but I just I love watching Parvati play the game. I enjoy everything she does um, in all of those seasons. So where Sandra, I don't enjoy watching her as much. She does she does a great job, and she definitely knows exactly what she needs to do, and she does it. But um, I'm going to say Parvati Chow. Done. Locked Cause she's, in. Because she's, cause she's amazing and she's yes. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer, Josh. This has been a lot of fun, mate. Really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much. And we look, we'll look, we get you back on, as I said, during uh, Second Chances to, to chat. We'll do an episode recap. Please let Reed know. We'd love to get him on the show too. We'll yeah. set that up as yes, well. Yes, I'll and definitely... I will let him know. Thank you so much. I love chatting about this stuff and it's so fun chatting with you about it who... I, you just have such a great way of interviewing and making me feel comfortable, so I really like that. I appreciate that. I'll save that sound bite and play it when I go to sleep to make me feel better at night, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. You do what you got to do. And I will do what I've got to do because um, that's what I do and that's what Josh told me to do. Uh, well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to wrap up the Josh Canfield interview. Thank you very much to Josh. A lot of fun that interview was and we're very glad that we were able to get that done and uh, we hope to get Reed lined up soon of course and uh, Sam Wandel Sir fans uh, plenty of interviews to tickle your fancy on our website uh, we're still hoping to get the John Mish one that's uh, in the process of being rescheduled John's quite busy at the moment with uh, with moving and nearly getting married to Jacqueline so uh, obviously more important things which uh, we are uh, obviously uh, respectful of and we'll uh, get that interview done when we're able to do it but uh, not just Sam Wandel Sir fans if your fans of all other seasons plenty of interviews of course tickle your fancy we're very close to the 300 mark now so get excited for that and uh, SurvivorOz.com is where you head to it click on the interview section you can do SurvivorOz.com forward slash interviews now that takes you directly to the page and of course uh, subscribing to us on iTunes is the easiest way to get them directly to your device now we've had some feed issues which we are in the process of fixing and uh, it does look like that we may need to again go through a change, we had to do this about a year or so ago, um, where we may need to get people to resubscribe to our feed on iTunes. So uh, stay tuned to our website. We'll post up details of that if it needs to be the case. But um, yes, we will keep you updated there. We always appreciate your support. Though. Remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, so you get up-to-date information on everything to do with Survivor Oz. And we've got lots to come still as we get ever closer to Survivor Cambodia Second Chance. Get excited! Until then, my name is Ben, this has been Survivor of the Travis Spoken, and we will speak to you next time on The Trains. <laughs>